Morning on the American Family Radio Talk Network. Brian Fisher is my name, your congenial, convivial, and amiable host, as always, offering you here on Focal Point Kevlar for the Mind. Satan wants to deceive us. He wants to trick us. He wants to fool us. That's the only way he can get any kind of access or control of our lives is by fooling us, deceiving us, tricking us. We're here to provide Kevlar for the mind to make us impervious to his lies and to his deceptions. Now, I want to get uh, to Jan in Springfield, Arkansas. Hang on just one quick second, Jan. Get right to you. 888-589-8840 is the number to call if you want to join the program. I just want to issue another reminder about this My Hope America program with Billy Graham. It's going to air tomorrow night on this network at 6.30 p.m. Central Time. You can hear it right here, same station that you're listening to it right now. If you're accessing us through audio and video streaming, which you can do at AFR.net. So, by the way, if you have family, friends that do not live in a city that's got one of our network stations, they can always access access us through audio and video streaming at AFR.net. We also have apps for the iPhone, for the iPad, and for the Android. That's how often how I will keep tabs on the program when I am away. So a lot of ways you can access the content. So right here, 6.30 on Thursday night, we'll uh, be broadcasting Billy Graham's My Hope America. This may be perhaps the last time he speaks to the nation on the subject of the gospel. He's going to be speaking from his home. It's on his 95th birthday. The broadcast is going to be interwoven with testimonies of people whose lives have been changed by the gospel of Jesus Christ. A good opportunity to open your home and invite people who don't know Christ to watch that broadcast with you or for your church to host a screening of this broadcast in your own sanctuary. You can go to the website watchbillygraham.org, watchbillygraham.org to get the TV station or cable network broadcast time in your area, or you can do audio on video streaming at AFR.net. That will be uh, tomorrow night. And then one other quick heads up, tomorrow at 10 o'clock Central Time on AFR, a special edition of today's issues featuring Ray Comfort, talking about his latest DVD project, Evolution versus God. And what Ray Comfort did in this DVD, some of you have probably seen it, he went to leading evolutionary scientists, and he asked them, is there evidence to support Darwinian evolution? And it, it's just almost hilarious, and it's actually kind of pathetic to listen to their answers because their answers, these are the leading evolutionary dudes in the world, and their answers make it clear that Darwinian evolution is not only unproven and unprovable, it is also unscientific. 888-589-8840, number to call if you want to join the program. That's 10 o'clock tomorrow uh, right here on AFR Talk. Let's go to Jan, Springfield, Arkansas. Uh, Jan, thank you for calling and thank you for waiting. What's on your mind? Uh, thank you, Brian. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm the first-time caller, but yet a supporter. Well, thank you for calling. Oh, yes, and I did want to mention the young man that answered my call. He was so nice, and I think that that ought to be known. All right, good. Well, yeah. uh, add a boy to, to Wesley for that. <laughs> well, anyway, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, what a wonderful program you always have, but today, I mean, it was just, put together, I mean, just wonderfully. What my question was, when you spoke about evil spirits within a home, uh, uh -huh. my husband uh, passed away. He never woke up 11 years ago, and that was in August. And this past August, my son, who lived behind me, he also passed away. I found him oh, with wow. a heart attack. Now, when I bought this house after my husband died, I moved from Little Rock into the country. The people that sold me the home laughed and said that there was spooks here, and they huh. named them. They named, they gave them names and laughed about it. Hmm. Well, anyway, my son had come over, and uh, he, now did, did they say how they knew the names of? No, of those? they just laughed about it. Huh. They called. They said we called them Charlie, hmm. and then my. son... Uh, son was over here, and I asked him, I says, why did you open all the kitchen cabinets? 
He says, I didn't, Mom. And then he brought that up. Well, then later I found out from the people up at the house, their son lived down the road, and he said uh, uh, a man from Vietnam uh, had lived here and uh, before their parents bought the place and said that um, he had in the bedroom I sleep in a a pedogram on the floor wow. with a barrel that he would burn, and he would have goats in there. Wow! And uh, uh, and and of course it was carpeted, and I says, and, that, and I'm sleeping in there. But when my son died, the weirdest thing happened that's never happened. I was awakened by this. It felt like there was somebody un- actually standing over just over me in the bed just so real Mm -hmm. it scared me so bad the only thing i could think to say is what are you doing here john my son's name because it scared me that bad and i thought it was a real person Uh that got in the house now what you said to do i i have about nine acres his trailer's still there my home is here i don't know what to do i'm so scared now because i believe you're the only one i have ever heard address this Hmm. ever well you know you don't have to be afraid jan because remember the scripture says greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world so you don't need to be afraid of these spirits they can't do anything to you other than frighten you they have no power over you they can't touch you they can't do anything to you because you have power and authority over them in the name of Jesus. And what I would encourage you to do, uh, Jan is you got a pretty sizable property, but I think at some point you might want to walk the perimeter of that property in in a, in an attitude of prayer. You don't have to be saying something the whole time, but walk the perimeter of your nine acres. If you get to a corner, whether you, I don't know if you got fences out there, get to a corner post on a fence where you turn, uh, and follow a different angle on the property line. Just put a, a a drop of oil on the top of that fence post, and walk the perimeter of your property, and dedicate that in the name of Jesus Christ, and take authority. Now you have to do it out loud, because demonic spirits cannot read our thoughts. We think they can, but they can't. God is the only one that can read our minds. Oh. So they can't. So they have to be rebuked orally. They've got to be rebuked verbally. That's why Jesus always spoke to the the spirits when he was dealing with supernatural spirits. He'd always speak to them uh, and command them to leave. So do the same thing with your property and then do that in both the homes, the the trailer on your property and your own home. Pray through those homes, anoint uh, the corners of the homes, anoint the doorposts inside the home over each room. Take authority uh, over any demonic spirits that are in those places in Jesus' name. Command them to leave. They have to go if they are commanded to leave in the name of Jesus. If you remember the names that were given to you by the former occupants, then you need to rebuke those. Those are probably the names of demonic spirits that are in your home. Take authority over them, rebuke them, command them to leave in Jesus' name. Particularly in the room where that pentagram was, you want to renounce anything that was done in that room in Jesus' name. Dedicate that space to Jesus Christ. Anoint it with the oil of the Holy Spirit and you will be free. 